Okay, our next talk will be about the status of programmatic trading in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. The two speakers that will be joining us today are Elias Gagas, who is the managing director of Tailwind in EMA, EMEA region, and Farshad Dabeshkhoi, who is the account director at AppNexus. Give them a hand, please. Hi, guys. I'm Fash from AppNexus. And I'm Elias from Tailwind. And I guess another way to describe what we're doing is two bearded men trying to discuss programmatic today, hopefully give you some insights on what we're seeing across the region. Sure. So without any further delay, uh, let us first of all tell you a bit of who we are and what we're doing. Fast, if you sure. be so, kind enough. So AppNexus might be a little bit alien to a lot of people in here. Um, but I'm sure as, uh, from, from speaking to agencies and a lot of the uh, networks out here, we're all moving towards the programmatic space. So MNX is going to be very familiar to you soon. But in, in, in short, a technolo technology platform enabling people to trade programmatically, we see about 80 billion impressions every day, uh, 53 different countries, and we process around 40 terabytes of data. Um, Tailwind? And on our end, uh, on Tailwind, uh, we like to describe ourselves as advertising technology integrators and consultants. So what we essentially do is we combine a portfolio of technologies, among them AppNexus is one of our valued partners, uh, with people with the knowledge to discuss with our partners exactly how these technologies fit to their specific needs and how they can be implemented in order to bring the actual results. Uh, we operate across southeastern Europe and several offices, and we actually have been operating since the beginning of the year from Dubai. Uh, some of you might have met and discussed with our regional director, Mohamed Kartabil. And what we're essentially going to be discussing today is the findings of a research which has been conducted over the period of the last couple of months, both in Western Europe, being covered predominantly by AppNexus, as well as South Eastern Europe and the MENA region, being conducted by ourselves as Tailwind. We have amassed over 700 responses from several players across the ecosystem. So advertisers, marketeers, agencies, publishers, ad networks. And what we're essentially going to be describing today is sort of how we see buyers and sellers, which are the two entities involved in the programmatic transaction, looking at this ecosystem. Let me start by giving a couple of insights with regards to the advertisers, the agencies, essentially the buyers of inventory. Now, as far as the understanding of programmatic, we are getting a majority of people saying that they have an excellent knowledge of the subject and a less amount of people discussing about a fair knowledge or even a slightly more limited knowledge of the subject. All of them say that they actually use programmatic in some shape or form, and there are several shapes and forms when programmatic is concerned. What is really interesting is that we're seeing quite a high percentage of advertisers or of buyers saying that they're willing and are, they're currently using programmatic both for brand as well as performance campaigns. And what is really crucial and something that we will touch upon further down the line within that presentation is what are the key issues that they actually identify when they're trying to use programmatic. By far the biggest one is what they call the lack of local premium inventory. And because you know numbers tell one part of the truth, but the other one is actually what the market says in face-to-face -face discussion, what this essentially translates to is the lack of local inventory, which is clearly branded and available for purchase through the programmatic channels. Yeah, so on the, on the same topic, when we looked at a comparison between what we saw in Western Europe, it's actually quite interesting. So uh, as I mentioned, you know, programmatic itself as a term, it sort of ties into what Parry was sort of talking about just around Twitter. It's about the, you know, the real-time decision-making around uh, an, an individual impression, for example. So what we saw in Western Europe is quite interesting. So you can see that the understanding in MIA, apparently, is, uh, is obviously excellent. And the usage of uh, programmatic for advertising agencies is saying we get it and we use it. So we have budgets for it, we, and we're happy to spend it programmatically. 
in Western Europe, I mean, we, we, it, it was a similar scenario, but we had a lot of people that were saying, look, programmatic is, is a bit of a beast. Like, I understand that there's a lot of people that just don't get it. They don't get it, what's RTB, what's programmatic, how am I really trading? And, you know, a lot of people did come back and say, I've got a fair understanding of it, but I also understand there's a lot of individual nuances that I probably don't get, and I probably need a little bit more help with. But even that, there's still, you know, I mean, if, you look at that, if you look at that chart, you can see majority of spend is going through programmatic. So if we just move on to the next slide, we can look at the uh, publishers, I guess. So the rest of the view now becomes quite interesting. And the rest of the view is obviously the publisher side of business, the people who are actually selling inventory. And one of the key distinctions that we're seeing, and I'm sort of preempting Fas here, but he will sort of corroborate that we're seeing yeah. the same trend uh, in Western Europe as well, is that on the publisher side of things, the amount, let's say, of at least quoted excellent knowledge of programmatic is far less than on the buyer side of things. So we're seeing sort of a gap as far as the understanding and the possibilities that programmatic brings from the publisher side of the business. The adoption is also lower than what we're seeing on the buyer side of things. The mechanism by which active publishers actually expose their inventory have quite a bit of a difference. So we're seeing still a substantial amount providing inventory through programmatic only on a blind basis. We are seeing some publishers actually making a move towards contextual description of their inventory, so, sort of categorizing it and exposing it in the programmatic channels. But we're seeing quite a small amount trying to essentially utilize the new capabilities that programmatic brings into the game, which is essentially data capturing, behavioral tracking, and exposing inventory not as mere impressions, but as audiences. So this is quite on the low uptake still. And as far as the issues that publishers are quoting, it's sort of a 50-50 split between the lack of demand, which is an interesting sort of oxymoron here, which we will discuss, as well as what we have been hearing from all of the publishers that we are discussing with, which is they need control. They need control on how they will be able to expose their inventory in the new programmatic channels to make sure that they fully capitalize on what the programmatic channels can bring, while at the same time maintain what they are already doing from the direct sales channels. So if we look at another comparison between MIA and Western Europe, I don't think this surprises many people in, in this room. Uh, you can see that the publisher understanding around programmatic is a lot less. Uh, and that's understandable. Look, this is not a switch. It doesn't just, you can't just switch it on and off. It's an education process and it's evolving of the industry. So as you can see here, you can see that even though there is a small understanding of programmatic from a publisher or a supply side, um, they still do execute programmatically because they see the overall benefits of it, the individual sort of decisioning, the categorization, and the attractiveness to an agency. At the end of the day, you follow the money. And the agencies are you know, executing that way, so why are the publishers not executing in the same way? And for in Western Europe, as you can see, obviously, we did have a lot of people who were still saying it's a beast, we have fair understanding or limited understanding, but it follows a similar trend. That's what we're trying to show here. It's the fact that on the supply side, that's where the knowledge gap is. And on the supply side is where we really need to bolster that sort of offering and really push forward with it because you need to match that. To use a business phrase, you need to match the supply and demand. You need to match what the agencies want. And to sort of move further to what has already been more or less identified as a, as a potential gap between the buyers and the sellers. This is something that we also see when we ask buyers and sellers about the percentage of either budgets that they spend or revenue that they expect from the programmatic. So on the buyer side of things, it seems like we're seeing things like 5, 10, 20% or even higher of budgets being actively now as we speak during 2014 uh, attributed and spent through programmatic. On the publisher side of things, and keep in mind that we're talking about local publishers in the regions that we are discussing, we're seeing that the uptake, the potential revenue that they expect to receive through programmatic is of a much lower percentage. Actually, 50% of the publishers that we asked mentioned that they expect to see something between 1% and 5% of their overall revenue coming from the programmatic channels. And this sort of is a perfect leeway for a bit of a ping pong session that we will yeah. have with FAS, which is the following. To sort of try to summarize the results, because numbers are fine and, you know, uh, charts are beautiful, but let's make them a bit more tangible. What we're seeing 
on one hand, is buyers are already committing a substantial and an important percentage of their budgets to buying through programmatic. I don't know what you're talking about, Elias. Uh, I'm getting minor revenues coming through programmatic. So I don't know what you're talking about. I don't, I'm not seeing this budget. Yeah, well, let, let's discuss a bit later on <laughs> how we can fix that. <laughs> At the same time, we see buyers craving, really craving, for what they call local premium inventory. They, they, they want to get their hands on entities and properties that they know, they're aware of, through the efficiencies and through the interesting new concepts that programmatic brings into the game. Fas? Yeah, but I've got smarter now as a seller. As a publisher, I've got smarter. I want to choose who's buying my inventory. I'm not just focused on, let me sell everything. Let me just sell everything, and if I hit my 100% fill rate, happy days. That's not how it works anymore. I'm selected because I know I have premium inventory. And to sort of make a last point, uh, which was one of the surprises of the research, at least on my end, we are seeing that buyers already understand that programmatic is something that they can use for brand campaigns as well. So it's not only performance. So ideally, they seem to be looking to buy both for branding as well as for performance campaigns. Yeah, and basically, I just want to sort of uh, you know, offer all my inventory blind and uh, just let you use it for performance. OK, so again, we'll, we'll see what we can do about <laughs> that. So a bit of a, of a conclusion, a bit of a summary uh, over what we've seen, uh, and obviously, Bear in mind, and I'm going to go into that in a bit, there's more to the overall and the full uh, research. First of all, programmatic is here. Uh, whether we fully understand it or not, there are budgets being spent, and there are quite a substantial amount of inventory being traded currently. Publishers seem to be in more need of information about what programmatic is and how it can potentially be used by them to actually achieve the results that they want added revenues, higher prices. I would make the comment, going back to the previous you know, discussion that we had, that the stage for what we call premium programmatic, which is essentially utilizing the automated capabilities to trade on fully exposed, completely branded premium inventory, is set. Because on one end, the buyers seem to be wanting that. And on the other end, the capabilities are there, but the publishers need to make the switch and the move to actually utilize them and gain better control, yeah. as well as additional revenues through it. And as a sort of personal comment, because we have been doing uh, quite a number of meetings throughout the year, we sort of define 2014 as a preparatory year. Uh, we're seeing all of the players sort of you know, taking their places, uh, identifying at least their high-level strategies. And from the discussions that we've been having, both with buyers as well as sellers, we fully believe that 2015 will be a full-on programmatic year from the beginning for all of us. To sort of conclude that, and potentially we might have some time for a couple of questions, five minutes, that's fine, uh, feel free to log in to our website and, and register for the full report. The full report has much more detail uh, on all of the subjects that we touched upon, plus even more. Uh, and at any point, feel free to get in touch with us, with Mohammed, uh, to discuss what programmatic is, uh, and how it could potentially be part of your strategy to deliver the results that you all crave. Thank you. So any questions? Don't be shy. It was that good. Or that bad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be outside for questions. Thank anyway, you. So. We can take it offline. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.